near the circle of will is which includes the anterior circulation and the posterior circulation the anterior circulation is formed by both the internal carotid arteries horizontal segment of the anterior segment cerebral artery and the anterior communicating artery the posterior circulation includes uh, both the vertebral arteries which join to form the single basilar artery and finally dividing into the posterior cerebral arteries the anterior and posterior circulations are communicated by a, via the posterior communicating artery so the internal carotid artery originates as a terminal bifurcation from the common carotid artery and has the following segments this includes the c1 or the cervical segment c2 or the petrous segment which runs in the carotid canal and gives off the carotico tympanic artery and median artery c3 and the lacerum segment which ascends up in the foramen lacerum c4 is the cavernous segment which gives off inferior hypofacial artery and meningeal artery c5 is the clinoid segment c6 is ophthalmic or supraclinoid segment which gives off ophthalmic artery and superior hypofacial artery and c7 the communicating or terminal segment which gives off the posterior communicating artery and anterior choroidal artery finally the internal carotid artery terminates anteriorly into the anterior cerebral artery and laterally into the middle cerebral artery here is a ct 3d reconstruction video showing the right brachiocephalic artery which gives off the right subclavian artery and ascends as a common carotid artery which then divides into the internal and external carotid arteries the internal carotid artery includes a c1 or a cervical segment and then the petrous segment which runs in the carotid canal and then ascends up as the lacerum segment in the foramen lacerum and uh, goes anteriorly in the cavernous sinus uh, takes a loop around the anterior clinoid process to give off the clinoid and supraclinoid segments and finally the terminating segments here is a mri top video showing both the internal carotid arteries which ascends up as the c1 or a cervical segment and then into the carotid canal the petrous segment and ascending into the lacerum foramen lacerum the lacerum segment going anteriorly and takes a loop around the anterior clinoid process and finally terminating into the anteriorly anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery laterally coming to the anterior cerebral artery which along with the middle cerebral artery forms in the termination of the internal carotid artery it is a smaller of the two and arches anteromedially to pass anterior to the genu of the corpus callosum and has the following segments so the a1 or the precommunicating segment which extends from the bifurcation of the ica up to the origin of the anterior communicating artery then the a2 segment which is distal to the anterior communicating artery up to the origin of the callosum marginal artery then the a3 segment extends from the genu of the corpus callosum anteriorly and then the a4 segment which lies above the body of the corpus callosum anterior to the plane of the coronal suture a5 is a post callosal segment which lies above the body of the corpus callosum posterior to the plane of the coronal suture so these are the branches uh, shown in the mr angiogram so here is the mr top video showing both the internal carotid arteries ascending up into its segments and finally terminating into the anterior cerebral artery and mca this is a acom communicating both the anterior cerebral arteries then here is the a2 segment distal to the acom then this lies anterior to the genu of corpus callosum is a a3 segment and finally supra callosal and post callosal segments here is a sagittal t2 mr image showing a1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery and the distal to the acom is the a2 segment anterior to the genu is the a3 segment superiorly above the uh, anterior to the coronal suture is the a4 segment and posterior to the coronal suture is the a5 segment then comes the middle cerebral artery it arises from the internal carotid artery as a larger of the two main terminal branches coursing laterally into the lateral sulcus and has the following segments so here is the m1 segment or the sphenoidal segment 
which arises which arises from the terminal bifurcation of the ICA courses laterally parallel to the sphenoid ridge. Then comes the M2 segment from the anterior superior aspect of the insular cortical surface courses posterior superiorly in the insular cleft. Then M3 or the opercular segment from the central sulcus of the insula courses laterally along the frontoparietal operculum. Here is the frontoparietal operculum. Then comes the M4 or the cortical segment from the external surface of the cilian fissure which courses superiorly on the lateral convexity. Then the posterior cerebral artery which arises as a terminal bifurcation of the basilar artery. Uh, which has the following segments the P1 or the uh, pre communicating segment which extends from the terminal bifurcation of the basilar artery up to the posterior communicating artery which lies within the interpeduncular system. Then the P2 or the post communicating uh, segment which extends from the PCOM around the midbrain and terminates as it enters the quadrigeminal system. Then comes the P3 segment which courses posterior medially through the quadrigeminal system and terminates as it enters the occipital lobe sulci. Then the P4 segment which lies within the sulci of the occipital lobe. Then the P5 are the terminating branches which are calcarine artery and the parieto occipital artery. Here is the MR top video showing the vertebral basilar system which includes both the vertebral arteries which ascends upward to form the single basilar artery which just before bifurcation gives off the superior cerebellar artery here and then comes the terminal bifurcation into the bilateral PCA which has the P1 segment and then the P2 segment which loops around the midbrain then comes the P3 segment in the occipital lobe sulci and then P4 and P5 segments. Here are the P4 and P5 terminal segments. Here is a MR top video showing both the internal carotid arteries which finally terminate into the anterior ACA and laterally into the MCA. Here is the M1 or the horizontal segment which lies parallel to the spinoid ridge. Then comes the M2 segment which lies in the sylvian fissure. Sylvian fissure here. Then the opercular segment which lies in frontal operculum then finally into the M4 or the cortical branches. Uh, let's see the cerebral arterial territory ACA which supplies the medial part of the frontal and the parietal lobes. The anterior portion of the corpus callosum, basal ganglia and internal capsule. Whereas the MCA supplies most of the lateral surface of the cerebrum except for the medial parts which is medial parts of the frontal and parietal lobe which is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and the inferior part of the temporal lobe which is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Then the uh, posterior cerebral artery, posterior thalamus perforating arteries branch of the P1 segment and supply blood to the midbrain and thalamus. The cortical branches of the PCA will supply the inferomedial parts of the temporal lobe. Then the occipital uh, pole or the visual cortex then the thalamus and splenium of the corpus callosum. Vascular supply to the basal ganglia includes the medial and lateral lenticulostriate arteries. The medial lenticulostriate artery which arises from the A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery and it supplies the globus pallidus and the medial portion of the putamen. Then the uh, lateral lenticulostriate artery arises from the horizontal or M1 segment which supply part of the head of the head and body of the caudate, globus pallidus, here putamen and posterior limb of the internal capsule. The posterior limb is also supplied by the anterior choroidal artery. Uh, here the both the thalami which are marked in green are supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Then these are the watershed areas which are important to be known because these areas are borders between cerebral vascular territories where the tissue is furthest from arterial supply and thus most vulnerable to reductions in perfusion. So here is the cortical border zone between the ACA and MCA territory in the frontal cortex extending from anterior horn to the cortex. Uh, here is the cortical border zone between the MCA and the PCA in the parieto occipital region extending from the posterior horn to the cortex. Here is the internal border zone between the lenticlostriate and MCA uh, territory 
uh, triple watershed zone is most vulnerable region where these three territories converge in the parieto occipital region posterior to the lateral ventricles these are the vascular territories on ct it's a ct axial image at the level of above the lateral ventricles showing the medial most parts of the frontal lobe supplied by the anterior cerebral artery laterally by the nca and the occipital uh, cortex by the posterior cerebral artery this is at the level of insula where the anterior uh, uh, in anteriorly by the anterior cerebral artery most of the part by the nc and its perforating branches the thalamus and the occipital lobe by the posterior cerebral artery this is at the level of cerebellum which uh, is taken over by the vertebro basilar arteries here is an mr angiogram image showing a single ba uh, basilar artery which bifurcates into the bilateral posterior cerebral arteries this includes the vertebro basilar system and then the carotid uh, include carotid system include the internal carotid artery and its segments finally dividing into the anterior cerebral artery whereas mca is not a part of the circle of willis which goes laterally here are few anatomic variants of intracranial vessels it is important to know them uh, so that we don't report it to be uh, abnormal communications Uh, these include arterial fenestration, which refers to segmental duplication of the intracranial vessels. In this way, then the azygous anterior cerebral artery, which is a rare variant where the two A1 segments of the ACA join to form a single trunk. Then the accessory MCA, which are uh, is a variant which arises from the anterior cerebral artery. Here is an image showing the internal carotid artery dividing into the ACA and MCA. This is the posterior communicating artery. accessory mca is term when it arises from the aca whereas duplicated mca when when it arises from the ica posterior circulation variants include a, a artery of percheron which is a solitary arterial trunk that branches off from the proximal segment of the pca and supplies blood to the paramedian thalami and most often the rostral midbrain bilaterally then the fetal origin of pca it is termed when the pcom is larger than the p1 segment of the PCA and which supplies uh, bulk of the blood to the PCA. Here is an MR uh, image showing a bilateral fetal PCOM. The, uh, then the persistent carotid vertebro basilar artery anastomosis. These include the persistent primitive trigeminal artery, which arises from the junction between the petrous and cavernous ICA and runs posterolaterally along the trigeminal nerve. Then comes the persistent aortic artery. which arises from the c2 or petrous segment of ica uh, within the carotid canal and emerges posteriorly and joins the basilar artery then the persistent hypoglossal artery which arises from the distal uh, ica and joins the vertebral artery then here is a persistent proatlantal intersegmental artery here is the mr top video showing both the ICA and the basilar artery and a, a communication with, between them which is a persistent trigeminal artery should not be considered as an anomalous uh, arterial communication then here is the uh, cerebral venous territory the whole uh, system may be divided into some sections uh, which include the superficial cerebral veins and the deep cerebral veins Uh, the superficial ones include the superficial cerebral veins inferior cerebral veins and the super superficial middle cerebral or the sylvian vein then the superior anastomotic vein of trolad which communicates with uh, the superior sagittal sinus with the middle uh, cerebral vein and then the inferior anastomotic vein of labe which communicates uh, the su uh, superficial middle cerebral vein with the transverse sinus the deep cerebral veins include internal cerebral vein basal vein of rosenthal and great cerebral vein and uh, dural venous sinuses which include paid paid so the cortical veins drain to the nearest dural venous sinus uh, such as the superior sagittal sinus and the straight sinus which then uh, uh, form uh, here a confluence known as torcula herophili uh, which includes the straight sinus superior sagittal sinus transverse sinus and the occipital sinus all these then drain into the transverse sinus and then into the sigmoid and finally into the internal jugular vein here is the ct and mr venogram images showing the superior sagittal sinus uh, both the internal cerebral veins join into the great cerebral vein of galen here which drains into the straight sinus and then into the internal jugular vein 
here is the superior sagittal sinus both the transverse sinus draining into the sigmoid sinus and finally into the ijv thank you